Hello and welcome to the companion video for the three tiered tassels that go on the Gilmore Girls Season 7 inspired scarf pattern. So today I'm going to show you how to make the tassels. They're much easier when you can picture them. So I think once you get the hang of this, you're going to enjoy it. So um, this is what a finished tassel looks like. You can see at the top here um, where it, it the tassel first forms, we have the yarn that's actually going to connect to the tip of the scarf or the point of the scarf. And then from there we have these uh, series of puffs. We have two puffs and then we have three that form out from there. So uh, the finished tassel will measure eight inches from the top to the bottom here. And I'm gonna show you how to make sure that that all comes out okay. So let's get started. Okay, so I know you're noticing, Kristen, why have you got a Rottweiler book? This book is the one that I use to help me uh, wrap the yarn that's gonna measure the tassels. So you want a book that's roughly nine or nine and a half inches uh, tall. And you're gonna see what I mean in just a second. So this is just my book of choice. So I'm using um, three strands together. These are the three colors that are in the pattern. If you've opted for chunky yarn, the number of times that you wrap this around the book is going to vary, but this is for worsted weight yarn. So with worsted weight yarn, you're gonna take your book and you're going to hold the yarn at the bottom here and you're gonna leave maybe about an inch overhang. So you see here, you want about an inch hanging over. Now we're gonna put you know, a finger here, it's easiest to use the, the left thumb here and hold it securely. And then we're gonna take um, our yarn and we're gonna wrap it eight full times around the book. So this one counts as one and every single one wrap around counts as a full wrap. So we wanna make sure we have eight total. So here I go. It's two, three, four. Now we're on six, we're on seven, now, when you finish, the yarn should be back um, towards the bottom. It should be pointing downward again. Here is that tail that we left over at the beginning. Now, here is the yarn from the back side here. And we want to leave it about an inch overhang on the back as well. And then we're going to just cut it. Now, this. here we go. Now I'm gonna take both of my hands here and slide this yarn off, the whole chunk, making sure that at the top I'm keeping my finger pinched on the bunch of it. So the tails that we have are gonna be at the bottom here, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is more or less try to even those, make sure that these are hanging evenly. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and gently cut through the yarn to disconnect it down here. So here's what we have so far. It's gonna be all shaggy and uneven and that's totally fine. So you have this chunk of yarn with some unfinished uneven ends. Okay, so we want to have our burnt pumpkin color as the first one that we're gonna use. And the amount of yarn that you take is up to you. If you want um, the fringe to be kind of uneven, then this doesn't matter. But I would cut one, you know, your first couple of ones at least as long as the whole thing is. So I'm cutting this, I don't know. I've just gotten so good at this that I just guess with it. But you can measure about how long one of those strips is and then try to cut your strips of yarn about the same length. So because um, the burnt pumpkin is going to be the top it's gonna be the topmost knot that we're making. This is also gonna be the, the part that attaches to the shawl. So we need this to be the same color as where it's gonna attach so that when we sew it in, it's not, you know, the wrong color. So first what we're gonna do is take the yarn and just wrap it underneath there. 
draw it up at the top. I can't really get all this in the frame, but I'm trying my best and make a knot. And as tight as you can get it is the best, obviously. So I'm tying that really tight and I'm not stopping at one. I'm gonna maybe do three even. I'm definitely doing two, but I might do three knots. Okay, so then I'm gonna just trim this a little bit because we don't need it quite that long to attach to the top. So now you're just gonna save this. Don't do anything else with this because it's finished. Now I'm gonna cut another piece of burnt pumpkin and we're gonna make our first little ball or our first little puff at the top. So I'm gonna hold all this and just sort of comb through it with my fingers to make sure that it's getting um, sort of evenly distributed, that all the little kinks are coming out of it and whatnot. So I'm gonna set this aside and um, lay out my burnt pumpkin there. And then I'm gonna bring the tassel back into focus and set it on top of the yarn. I want this to be more or less about an inch or so away from the top, but it doesn't really matter. Again, you get so good at this, it's really a, um, a learning situation and you get really good at it and then it comes naturally. So you can see here that we've got it looking like that. When we're happy with how much yarn is right here at the top, we're gonna tie this really, really tight. I'm gonna cinch it once and twice and maybe even a third time. The third time is up to you. I'm gonna just leave it at two. So you'll notice here that we've got these hanging really long. Sometimes I like to cut them as I go along and make them even, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna even this up once and for all later. So it doesn't need to be done right now. So now that we're done with the first one, I'm gonna move on when we start working on our um, second section here. I'm gonna move on to a different color of my three colors, just so that we have an uh, you know even distribution of the colors throughout. So since I've used the burnt pumpkin there, I'm gonna move on maybe to the cream now or the ivory, which is the actual name of it. Okay, so first I'm gonna split these into two. Think of it a lot as braiding. I think as you go along with this, you'll start to feel like you're braiding somebody's hair. So split them into mostly two even sections right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then kind of set it aside again. Lay out your ivory. Now with one of your sides that you split, lay it on top of the ivory here. And really close, we're gonna go as close as we can to this first knot right here. And we're gonna tie this off up here. I'm gonna explain why we're tying this multiple times. But basically what we wanna do is create a tiny, tiny like little puff about that big, or maybe a little less, it's all up to you and we're gonna make a little tiny puff right here and we're gonna tie that really tight. And the reason for this is if we didn't do these little mini puffs, then the, the second set of puffs or like bigger balls would not be emphasized. They would just look really flat and they wouldn't have any body. So that's why we're doing the little mini ones for emphasis. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. That aside, lay out the ivory. Okay, tie it really tight there again. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna move on to another color. Again, evenly, we want an uh, even amount of colors in there. So now I'm gonna move on to the green or the light sage. So then I'm gonna move the tassel aside, lay down the yarn, and I'm gonna take, kind of comb this out a little bit. You can do it with your fingers, you can do it with a wide tooth comb, whatever you wanna do. So then, we're gonna go about an inch down again, more or less. It does not have to be um, 
ex extremely specific, it's just helpful. So we can see our second puff right there, start to form it, and then once we're happy with the um, you know, puffiness of it, we can kind of stretch it out a little bit. Once we're happy with the length and overall look of that, then we're gonna, you guessed it, tighten it really tight again. Two or three, whichever you wanna do is completely up to you. So now we're gonna just repeat this on the other side and I will meet you back when we're done with it. Okay, now this is where we're at. We are about three fourths of the way done with our tassel. So now I'm gonna go back to the pumpkin, the burnt pumpkin color again, just to sort of try to keep all those even. So here's that, I'm gonna just set it aside. What we're gonna do now is divide this into three sections. So more braiding sort of techniques coming into it. We want to make a center one like this, but we wanna make sure that we're leaving enough on the outside that these puffs are gonna be emphasized as well. So I think we've got it about good. I'm gonna just bring that over there. Okay, so we've got three sections here, your two outside ones and then your, uh, little Adam and Eve that you did where you sort of separated um, some from the two main ones to make a third one here. So now we're gonna take our burnt pumpkin yarn and this time it's harder to set it on top of it so I'm gonna just push it underneath it. And we're gonna do the very same thing that we did up here at the top which was create these two really small little puffs, the little mini puffs. So I'm gonna push this up here just to where I've got, and I might even wanna, the closer together I can get them, the better. And then I'm gonna tighten this up. And we're gonna do the same thing right here and right here with the burnt pumpkin or any color that you're using to make sure it's varied. We're gonna create two little tiny puffs over here again, just like we did right here and like we did up here. So I'll meet you back when we finish with that. Okay, so now that we are done with that, we're gonna move back to the ivory color. This is our last round now of puffs that we're gonna make. So we're basically gonna do the same exact thing that we did up here. We're gonna create three puffs out of our three sections. And again, how big you want to make them is completely up to you. Once you're happy with it, make it really, really tight. I mean, don't break your yarn with your hands alone, but you know what I mean. Make it as tight as you can possibly make it. The puffs will be emphasized a lot more. And here's another side note. I'm going to put this up on the screen too, um, just so that you don't miss this message. Earlier when we wrapped the yarn around the book eight times, if you want your if you want the tassels to be thicker, by all means, you know, do maybe 10, 12 wraps, um, maybe even 14, depends on, you know, it's all up to you. But just remember that it will weigh the, the scarf down. The scarf pattern is already fairly stretchy. Um, so keep in mind that, you know, the heavier your tassels are, the um, more that the ends of the scarf will sort of get pulled down. So we're just working on this last one right here. There we go. And okay, now we have all these hanging here and we're ready to trim it up. So I'm gonna just cut these little stragglers off first because having those in the way really distracts me. And now we're gonna take a ruler or a tape measure and here I've got this heavy duty Stanley thing going on. But from the top of it, from the top of the tassel, where the tape measure or the ruler kind of grabs onto that first puff, the top of the first puff, I'm gonna comb this out one more time and just make sure it's laying flat. We are going to measure eight inches, right where I see eight inches on the ruler. I'm gonna just go ahead and make a cut. And this is going to be my guide here. Sorry. If, you're, if you've ever been in cosmetology school, you're going to be familiar with using guides. You know what I mean? So this was me a while back in cosmetology school. But since I'm not doing hair anymore, I'm cutting fringe. Okay. So since I made that generic cut there, I'm going to go ahead and just start 
trimming across. You can hold the yarn however you want to hold it. I feel that the more gently you hold it, the better result that you get. Okay, and we're gonna just come over here, follow the guide again. Now, you might wanna even it up a little bit, like for instance over here, I can see a couple of pieces that are a little bit longer than the rest. But you know, the way that we tied these and the fact that there's three tiers of different uh, ties and you know knots going on means that some of these might flare out a little bit differently. They may look a little shorter because of the knot. That's fine with me. Of course, if you wanna be a lot more tedious about this, that's completely up to you. I like it looking uh, a little bit rustic because again, it shows it's handmade, but you know, you can be as, um, as careful and calculated with this as you personally want. But this is the overall finished look. Of course, you can flip it around and make sure there's no like little tags of yarn hanging on the back that you want to try to trim up a little bit more. So I'm going to show you real quick where I like to attach it to the scarf. Okay, this is the end of our scarf right here. Of course, on this side, we did our increases. We've knit flat right here for five rows. And then on this side, we did decreases. So it's kind of hard to see that until you pull this down, then you can really see. So the, the tassels do a really good job at emphasizing that. So as you can see, you have these two sort of um, you have this hole right here and you have another sort of hole right here. I like to find this little like U-shaped area right here, kind of in the middle and attach it right here. So what I do is I just loop one of my strands through. I take the other strand from the other side and then I just take both of them and tie it together, make a knot to secure it. And for this one, I do tie it quite a few times. I do it uh, four, five, I've already done it three, so this is four and that's five. So there's quite a bit of knots right there. You can see it, but you know, it's not um, an eyesore or anything, but that really helps um, to keep the tassel secured to the end of the scarf. So there it is. I'm sorry I can't give you a full shot, but you will have seen that in the pattern. Um, and then you would just take these two, weave them in, and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. Feel free to message me anytime. I'll leave my email down below. You also know how to contact me on Etsy. I'm here for any questions that you have. Um, I'm usually around a lot of the day, so I'll try to get back to you ASAP. Um, and I'm absolutely happy to clarify anything that you have questions on. Thank you so much for watching.